Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a new type of fuel that is being produced that could potentially extend the lifespan of internal combustion engine cars. Pretty exciting stuff. Let's get into it. The big headline here is that Porsche just invested $75 million into a company named Highly Innovative Fuels, HIF for short. It's a Chilean company that produces e-fuel. That gives them a 12.5% stake in the company. Now, the reason that Porsche or Porsche for the uh, Porsche snobs here watching today's video invested that money is they are trying to transition away from traditional fossil fuels into fuels that are a little bit more on the carbon neutral side of things. Now, if you guys have never heard of e-fuel, the way that it's produced is they actually pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then they pull hydrogen from salt water and they basically heat stuff up a crazy high temperature using wind power and they mix it all together and then this produces fuel that is the same stuff is what you put in your car. But because they're pulling carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they're getting this hydrogen from salt water, it's technically carbon neutral because it's not adding any extra carbon dioxide to the atmosphere that wasn't already there before. So it, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. And the biggest reason why Porsche is you know, basically investing this money into this company is they understand that they have a ton of cars that they've sold throughout the decades that people are still driving and will continue to drive. And that is not going to go along with their whole narrative of carbon neutrality, right? And so they're like, okay, how can we, you know, continue to push electric vehicles? Because obviously Porsche has the new Taycan and they're going to make more electric vehicles as time goes on. How can we continue to push that? But then also make sure that people that are in enthusiasts of our cars are still, you know, basically doing their part to help protect uh, the environment because it's very important to them as a company. And that's where this fuel comes in because again, this is just like regular gas, but instead of us digging it up from the ground and adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, we're not adding anything uh, to the atmosphere. Now, let's get into some downsides with this. The first downside that is, you know, probably the biggest is cost. Uh, so basically, this e-fuel costs more than two times the amount of gas. And so you imagine actually at the pump, I mean, right now gas prices are astronomically high. I think like the average right now is like $4 and something <laughs> cents per gallon. And so you can imagine if you had to fill up with e-fuel instead, you're probably gonna be paying closer to like $10 uh, per gallon, just as a reference point uh, for all of you. And so that's that's a big thing is the cost. And the reason the cost is so high is because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a pretty complex process, right? First off, you've got to get the carbon dioxide out of the air, right? You've got to get the salt water. Uh, you've got to well, get the hydrogen out of the salt water more specifically. And then you have to transport hydrogen, which is pretty difficult because it has to be under immense pressure, but then also extremely cold to be able to transport it safely. If you guys don't understand why that has to be that way, um, just go watch a video from the 1930s of a thing called what the Hindenburg, and then you'll kind of understand why <laughs> transporting hydrogen is kind of uh, difficult. Um, but the whole process, right? Again, you've got to build the wind turbines to be able to produce the wind power to then heat up this whole concoction to the right temperature where everything can be combined. Because basically what they do is they try to split off an oxygen atom from the carbon dioxide so that it turns into carbon monoxide. So then it can combine with the hydrogen. It's complicated chemistry stuff that, you know what, I'm probably not even smart enough to be talking about, but you know what, at least uh, one of you watching this video will probably understand the whole process. But all you need to know is it's a complex process, it's very expensive right now, and so that makes it so it's kind of uh, difficult um, to basically implement. And uh, right now with all of the inefficiencies associated with the process, it's actually more efficient to build electric vehicles than it is to make this fuel right now. But as technology improves over time, you know, maybe it'll become something that is just kind of easier to produce as time goes on. Uh, now, I guess for my thoughts on this quickly before we cap off this video, I'm super excited for this. I'm excited for this technology to be available because I think that this is a much better alternative to going to fully electric vehicles. I think that between this and if automakers focus more on like plug-in hybrids, I think that would be the route to go because again, like I mentioned in other videos, with plug-in hybrids, you can do that electric driving, right? Because most people's commutes are relatively short. And so if you have a plug-in hybrid with 40, 50 miles of range, then you can probably get to the store and to your job every single day without using any sort of gas, right? And then you just charge your car at home every night. 
Uh, and then if you did use gas and this gas came from e-fuel, right, then we're taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And yes, we are technically putting it back into the atmosphere once the car does its whole internal combustion engine thing, but we're not putting any extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And so I think that, that would be a really cool future for cars because we would still have the benefits you get with an internal combustion engine car. You'd have the benefits of, you know, again, the hybrid system that'll allow you to do full electric driving, which will obviously help out with reducing CO2 emissions to the atmosphere. And overall, I mean, this is, this fuel is already carbon neutral. And so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I really hope that this can be scaled up to a large enough amount to where it could potentially replace having to dig for fossil fuels. And I don't think this would happen even in like a few decades. I'm thinking maybe like you know, 100 years from now, right? Uh, but just imagine, right? Put on your future goggles 100 years from now. We could still have crazy fun cars. You could still have like V10s and V12s and fun stuff like that. And you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel like you're doing anything harmful to the environment because this is just reusing carbon dioxide that we've already uh, put up there. But I want you guys to let me know what you think about this. If you think this is something that we should invest more time and money into, or if you think we should just jump all into EVs. With that being said, I'll see all of you in that next video.